Hello and welcome back for another Penny Dreadful video. Today we're going to be playing Ors of Babies, which is a deck that I tried at the start of the season. I, I got a 5-0 with it, then I tried gradually improving it. And the more I tried to improve it, the worse my results got. So at some point I kind of dismissed the deck as just not good enough and just getting a lucky 5-0. But recently I, I saw some players getting 5-0s and 4-1s with it. So I decided this is kind of a sweet deck. Maybe let's give it another try. I saw that most of the, the new lists are just copies of that first 5-0 that I got. I still think that despite my results had gotten worse when I tried to improve it, there are some things that I wanted to change. Uh, so I still made some changes. So how does the deck work? The deck centers around Enduring Renewal, which is a four mana enchantment, two colors and two white. You have to play with your hand revealed. Whenever you draw a card, uh, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, it goes into your graveyard and otherwise it goes into your hand. So that's not necessarily good. But the second line of text or the last line of text on this card says that whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from play, you return it to your hand. So that is kind of what we're building around. That's what makes this combo tick because this is a combo deck. How do we use it? We play X mana creatures. So Chamber Sentry and Endless One. We can cast them for X is zero. They would immediately die because they have zero toughness and you would immediately return them to your hand. So what this does, you can loop them. Basically you play it, it goes back to your hand, you play it again. Now in and of itself, that doesn't do anything. But if you pair that with some of the other cards in the deck, that creates a loop that infinitely drains your opponent. Um, for example, Falcon Wrath Noble is a four mana blood artist with flying. They lose a life every time a creature dies. So if you loop the Endless One or the Chamber Sentry, they die. We have Cruel Celebrant, which is a two mana Blood Artist, uh, black and white. For a one, two, whenever a creature dies, you gain a life. They lose a life. You have Disciple of the Vault. Disciple of the Vault uh, makes them lose a life whenever an artifact dies. That only works with the Chamber Sentry, but we'll get to that later. Another way to also kind of go off is with Grim Harrispex. Whenever a creature dies under your control, you draw a card. This means that with an endless one, you can draw, well, basically your whole deck. The only downside is that you can't draw any of the creatures in your deck because Enduring Renewal doesn't allow you to draw any more creatures. So that's why we have Bastion of Remembrance, which is an enchantment that whenever a creature dies, they lose a life and you gain a life. So that's a win con that you can draw into when you have an Enduring Renewal, a Grim Herrick Specs, but no way to drain your opponent. Another card you can draw into is Ors of Charm. Ors of Charm is both removal, it can kill a creature and you li lose life equal to their toughness, or you can return a zero mana or one mana creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Once you go off with Grim Harris Specs and Enduring Renewal, lets you draw into uh, creatures and that you will hit your Disciple of the Vault. It will go to the graveyard, but you've drawn your Ors of Charm and you can return the Disciple of the Vault to the battlefield. You can also return Chamber Sentries, Endless Ones. Um, so that's another way to go off with the Grim Hero specs. Another combo with the Injury Room Renewal is Kami of False Hope. You prevent all the combat damage that turn. And this this is very good against the creature decks um, because they, yeah, basically they're locked out of combat. So they have to find another way uh, to win. We have Dimmer House Guard. Dimmer House Guard is a four mana creature, but we don't really care about that. Mostly Dimmer House Guard has Transmute, so for three mana you can go find a four drop, and that four drop is usually Enduring Renewal, but it can also be a Falcon Wrath Noble, if you're that's the part of the combo that you're missing, and it can also be a Ranger of Eos. And Ranger of Eos uh, fetches two uh, one mana or less creatures from your deck when you play it. So you can go get a Disciple of the Vault, you can go get one of the, the babies, or you can go get a Kami of False Hope. So that can also tutor your win con for you. To round out the deck, we have Tight Hollow Scholar as a little bit of disruption. We have Dust Dawn, which destroys all creatures with power three or greater on the front side. And then on the back side for five mana, you can return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. So that also allows you, when you're going off with Grim Harris specs, to find your other win cons. And it just provides you with a little bit of value if your opponent has been trading cards with you all game. This thing can just return everything from your graveyard to your hand and that usually should let you go off and gain a bunch of value. Then the, the mana base um, is just black and white lands. I have two cycling lands because you do want to hit your land drops to get to four mana. At the same time, you don't always need that much more. You don't have a lot of filtering in the deck, basically none. Um, so having a little bit of extra card draw in your mana base is pretty good. 
Um, Vault of the Archangel is another nice one in the deck. This kind of allows you to grind out a fair game. You can trade your creatures for theirs. You can gain a bit of life. What can happen is that maybe your opponent is able to disrupt the combo and then you just play endless ones for four or five or six and try and win that way. Doesn't seem like that's a legitimate way to win, but I've had uh, plenty of games won just by doing that. Then over to the sideboard. The sideboard has a little bit of storm hate with deafening silence. It has Ashes of the Abhorrent, um, which is graveyard hate. Basically, it stops flashback. But more importantly, when you board this in, this is also sort of a win con because when you go off with Enduring Renewal and a baby, and this on the board, you gain infinite life. And against a lot of decks, that's good enough. And especially when you board it in against Dredge, that is good enough because they can't beat infinite life. Children of Corliss, uh, you can sacrifice it to gain back all the life you lost that turn. So it's decent against burn and aggressive decks. And it has some uses against Storm, where basically if you let them resolve their tendrils, wait till the lethal copy goes on the stack and then gain all the life back that you've lost that turn. That essentially means that they need to get double the storm count, which sometimes they can do, but they can't always do that when you force them to go off early or put a lot of pressure on them. Duress for control and combo matchups. Vindicate as removal for annoying permanence. Grim Harrisbex is a little bit of extra value in the sideboard. I kind of want to put a fourth in the main, but I couldn't find the spot, so I figured let's just put it in the sideboard. In the grinding matchups, this card is one of the best ones in your deck but it's kind of slow maybe for the main deck. Then the, the curve gets a little too bloated. And we have another Dusk Dawn in the sideboard for aggressive matchups, and it's also fine against uh, the grindier ones. But that's the deck. Uh, I haven't played with it in a while, so I'm curious to see if the results that other people have been getting are just because the deck is good or, yeah, or not. I'm curious to find out. Okay, we're here for round one. Um, we're on the play, and this hand we have some temples to look for some things. We have part of the combo. The only thing we really need is lands and enduring renewal. So let's just try to keep this. We have some removal as well. We'll see how it goes. Play the temple, scry, tie hollow color. It's kind of awkward because we can't really cast it next turn. I think I just bottom this because I need lands and I need an enduring renewal. So pass the turn. Swamp, okay. Duress. Okay, interesting. There's not many decks that play main deck Duress. Well, they can take our Dusk Dawn or our Orzhov Charm. They decided to take the Orzhov Charm. Yeah, it makes sense. Dusk Dawn is not really a card you want to be discarding. We draw another temple. Play the temple. I do want my fourth land, but I also kind of want to draw some sort of action. So I will bottom this. We can dig with a fourth land with the temple if we need to. Against a discard deck, I kind of want to have some impactful plays. Sunken Runes, okay. So this is like blue-black control. So our opponent didn't do anything. I guess we play another temple. We're gonna draw a tight hollow scholar. Now I think I, I might want this actually. So let's put it on top. I think I'll actually play the chamber sentry. I don't mind as much if this gets countered and the cruel celebrant is probably more valuable. This is something that will happen quite a lot against decks that seem to be interacting. You just go on a sort of mediocre creature beatdown plan until you can find a spot to, to go for the combo. Fairy Vandal, okay. So this is Delverish deck. But the Chamber Sentry, they need to play some card draw, otherwise our Chamber Sentry can't shoot their Vandal. I imagine they will, but if they grow it too much, then the Dust Dawn might be able to destroy it. Island, yeah. Ponder, okay. So they decided not to shuffle. I don't like that. Imnitorak, yikes. Uh, that's pretty bad for us. So there's just some sort of blue-black mid-range deck. Yeah, they hit us for two. Now we draw the tight hollow scholar, so let's see what's going on. Delver, Ponder, Brainstorm, Tyrant Scorn. They have a pretty good hand. I guess I take the Tyrant Scorn and then hope that their Brainstorms and Ponders don't get them too many crazy things. I don't love our position, but let's just go beat down. I guess we just try and race them now. They play Delver, but we can kill their Delver. If they are not able to kill our chamber sentry, we will kill their delver. And they ponder and brainstorm. Yeah, that's ponder, okay. And grow their fairy, yeah. And they decide not to brainstorm. And yeah, that makes sense. Normally you kind of want to brainstorm first and then ponder so you could potentially shuffle some stuff away. Take three. We get to kill their delver, that's good. 
and we have another cruel celebrant. So let's just play the celebrant, shoot the delver, and go attacking with the scholar. So they have a, a big flyer, so they can probably leave this back on defense. No, they want to go attacking. Okay, they want to race. I think we're fine with that. Brainstorm, throw the fairy. Okay, no blocks. We're down to 11. So they're winning the race, but we have a potential removal spell for their thing. Kind of want to keep this chamber sentry back for if they play another fairy vandal, then they can't block. So let's play the cruel celebrant first, then attack with the scholar and the celebrant. I want to attack with the sentry just because I don't want to have them flash in another fairy vandal to eat it. We can also just use it to shoot them and it will deal them one damage and it will also trigger both the cruel celebrants. So we gain two life, they lose two life, and then they can't play Delver and, and have it survive. So that seemed pretty good too. We're missing out on the damage, but it looks like it was the right play because this, oh no, it's a brainstorm. It's not a fairy vandal. Their vandal grows again. We still have the potential to Dusk Dawn and kill their vandal. So they need to keep open counter magic for that. Because if they lose this vandal, they lose all their pressure. This vandal will kill us in, well, two turns most likely. Ponder, yeah, okay. Grow the vandal. Okay, they attack us down to five, so we're dead next turn. We can definitely gain some life with this chamber sentry, which I think we do want to do, because we're so tight on mana. So let's just shoot them, get some triggers, and get out of range of their um, fairy vandal. Okay, untap. What do we draw? Swamp. That doesn't really help us much. So I think we, I think we try and resolve the dusk dawn. So there's two ways about this. Their opponent doesn't know we have the swamp. Um, so they might be keeping open a counter spell. We play the endless one for zero. They go down to eight. Then we attack them for four. They go down to four. They can't really kill us because we're going to be at nine. So there's no way they can grow their vandal to be that big. So they might be inclined to counter this endless one. So let's just play the endless one for zero. And if they do counter this, um, we can resolve a dust on. They let it resolve. Okay. I think we just go attack. If now they have a Vandal, they need to have like Vandal Brainstorm to be able to eat something. They do not, um, so I guess we just play our land and play the Dusk Dawn. I don't imagine this resolves, but if we draw another land next turn, oh, it does resolve. Wow. Okay, so then we're in great shape. Man, our opponent pondered and brainstormed and didn't really find anything. They just have that one soul Vandal and that's it. Cling to dust. Okay, that's good. That's good for them. At least it means that any, oh, another cling to dust to gain three life. Yeah, okay. So they are drawing a bunch of cards also then. Um, and rem them removing the dust on is kind of annoying because it gives us no follow-up. Even la a land here is now a dead draw, whereas otherwise it would be pretty good. And they also have plenty of cards to, to escape away for this cling to dust. Another brainstorm, okay. They're clinging to dust. Tombstalker, okay. That is a big boy. Kind of a problem. Delver as well. Yeah. Um, Dimmer House Guard. Okay. What can we do with this? If we find an Enduring Renewal, a Renewal that doesn't really do anything. So I think we have to transmute this. And then we go find a Ranger of Eos to be able to find like Kami of False Hope. And then we kind of have to hope we draw land so we can cast that. And otherwise, maybe we can find two zero mana cards. But they also still have Cling to Dust, so they can draw cards or gain life. So we're in a tough spot. This Tombstalker is really hard to deal with for us. I mean, if we get Enduring Renewal, then we do have outs to, to draw the combo, but then we need to resolve that. Maybe that was actually better. Maybe. Although they, they can actually stop um, the Enduring Renewal combo with their Cling to Dust. So they didn't flip the Delver, so they probably just drew the Bad River. So I imagine they didn't have a... Sp they, their last card in hand is not a spell then because otherwise they would have put that on top with their brainstorm to be able to flip their delver this turn well they're casting something is this another tomb stalker kind of looks like it or cling to dust yeah cling to dust gaining another three life okay at least they can't cling to dust us again anytime soon i mean if they attack with the tomb stalker we have to draw something for us to be able to survive next turn 
if we do, we do get to attack them. Well, actually, no, we don't need to draw something because we have the ranger. So we just need the ranger to resolve, which against one mana is probably doable. So let's play a swamp, cast our ranger, and then yes. And then we go looking for two kami of, the f of false hope. So we play the kami, then we attack with everything. Let's see if they can flip their delver. I hope not. They're fetching. Normally you would want to wait with fetching to see if the card that you reveal with the delver is one that you want, and then you can always decide to fetch away. Like fetching for thinning doesn't seem good, and I don't think they knew what they had on top anymore. So they don't flip their delver. That's good for us. Detection probe, okay. They see the Kami that they know about. So if they attack with their Tomb Stalker, we just sack it, and then they go down to four. So now they're in a bad spot. If they don't attack, we don't have to use the Kami. And if they do attack, we just use the Kami and then we can attack back for a lot. And normally the scary, yeah, look, they can't attack. Normally the scary part is um, we have one Kami and they can use a removal spell on it during your turn so you're not protected during their turn. But we actually have two Kami, so we are protected against that. Uh, fed it Heath, okay. You just play the Kami. I don't think there's a reason to play the land. So let's keep them guessing. If we attack here with the Ranger and the Tight Hollow Sculler, then they would eat the ranger or they most likely eat the sculler. If they eat the sculler, they go down to three or they throw away their delver. No. Oh, well, they scoop. I think we would have figured it out, but our opponent was gracious enough to just scoop them up. So sideboarding against the delver. So this is where I don't like the vindicates. The vindicates are good because they're super flexible, but they are three mana. And against the delver deck, it's kind of unlikely that we get to resolve this. But we do want an extra Dusk Dawn. I think we want Duress. While Kami was pretty good this game, I don't think we necessarily want to be on that plan against them. Just because the scenario of them having a removal spell at the end of our turn, killing our Kami and then we can't sack it is pretty likely. Ashes of Abhorrence seems okay. Gaining infinite life against them is probably good enough. It also stops Cling to Dust, which they are playing main deck, so I kind of want to have a proper answer for it. I might take out a Dimmer House card just because it's pretty slow. I'll take out one Endless One because the combo is less likely here. I do want Grim Harrispex, I feel. Ores of Charm. We kind of have too many things that we want to board in. I don't want to go down on Cruel Celebrants. I don't want to go down on Disciple of the Vault. Maybe cut a Ranger, kind of slow as well. Cut the Bastion, it's kind of slow. Maybe just take out two duresses, only have two, and then rely on our scholars otherwise. Yeah, I'm not sure about this, but let's just do it because our time is almost up. We have a part of the combo. We don't have any way to interact, but the thing is they're also playing a him to Torak deck, so mulliganing a bunch to a perfect hand, then getting disrupted a bunch and himed, that just seems like disaster. So I'd rather just keep a, a clunkier seven. Although Delver does punish that, so there it is, Delver, yeah, now our hand looks somewhat bad. So let's hope they can't flip it too quickly. Temple, okay. Scry, Duress. I do think we want that. We just want to clear it away from counter spells. Can they flip their Delver? I hope not. That's so rough, like blind flipping Delvers on turn one, on turn two. But so much pressure on us. Now, Brainstorm, yeah, they're going to flip their Delver. That's unfortunate. And they get to hide good cards. So I think I'll just run out the Cruel Celebrant now that I can. So what did they reveal? Cling to Dust. Okay. Cling to Dust's annoying. Bad River. So they can fetch the bad cards away. They can fetch one bad card away. Um, let's play the Swamp. Let's run out the Cruel Celebrant. I want to use my mana. And then next turn, can Temple of Silence, Dress. The main thing we want to get rid of is counter spells, I guess. Well, let's see what they have. They decided not to fetch with the Bad River, so they must like their hand, which is bad news for us. Feed the Swarm, okay. That's fine. Another Enduring Renewal. Let's dress them. They fetch. Do they just have a Cling to Dust in hand? Looks like it. Okay, double Cling to Dust, miscast. Counter target instant or sorcery spell. We don't have many of those, so I think we're, well, I mean, we're going to have to fight through Cling to Dust anyway. Um, so maybe I do just take the miscast. If I draw an Orge of Charm, I want to be able to kill their Delver. And the Cling to Dust, we're going to have to fight through. But we have the Ashes to make those a lot less scary. Then again, these do draw cards. And just stranding them with this miscast could be good. No, let's take the miscast. Just because if I draw a removal spell, I want to be able to cast it. And oh, look, there's the Orge of Charm. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I feel pretty, pretty smart right now. But put it on top. 
We just want to kill this Delver. It means that they don't have any pressure and we can fumble around a little bit longer. They cling to Dust or Jurest just to draw a card. They get in with the Delver. We got out of 12. Tormod script. Okay, so they really went deep on the Graveyard 8. So we know they have Cling to Dust in hand. Do we know anything else? We play the Temple. Don't need another Enduring Runeal. And then I think we kill their Delver on upkeep, just so they have to spend their mana on their turn. And we do have the combo rolled up with this Dimmer House card. We can tutor for the Ranger of Eos. And the Ranger of Eos can get us a full combo. Obviously they have tools to fight that with the Tormod script and the Cling to Dust. But so I don't imagine we just run out of this turn during renewal right away because that can kind of lock us out of doing anything. Ooh, Tombstalker? I wouldn't like that. Yep, Tombstalker, okay. So we have the Enduring Renewal, we have the Ashes to gain infinite life, but they also have the Tormod script, so that doesn't seem great. Let's just transmute the House Guard, go get a Ranger, and then play this Chamber Sentry, just as an answer to a Delver, and just to have it on the board. Tombstalker is a problem. And I also feel like maybe this deck is a little land light, or we need some way to ramp. Maybe we should be playing like Dark Rituals or something, because our hand is a little bit clunky. We have a lot of four mass sorcery sweet spells. Brainstorm, yeah. So I hit us down to five. Yeah, we're in trouble. Disciple of the Vault, okay. Well, let's play the Ashes. So this will stop their Cling to Dust uh, escape as well as potentially gain us a little bit of life. Let's play the Disciple of the Vault, but they still have a Cling in hand. It's gonna be difficult to win. Let's shoot them because we do need to gain some life. But I also don't know really what we can draw. This Tormod script has got us pretty, pretty blocked. Oh, we, did we really? We just shoot them for zero? Yeah, then we're dead. I, I don't think we would have won this game otherwise, but that was kind of bad. Sideboarding. Maybe I do want to Vindicate. It's super awkward against their miscasts, but Falcon Wrath Noble, I don't think we really need it because if we tutor, we can always tutor for the Ranger, Disciple, Chamber Sentry combo. I don't want too many Vindicates, but I do want some. Wars of Charm seem good. Maybe just go down on the Ashes. Yeah, let's try this. I really don't know how to sideboard with this deck. Like all of the pieces kind of matter. You want a, like a critical mass and yeah, you have some ways to tutor and stuff, but I, yeah. I really don't know. So we're on the play. Yeah, I think we we do keep this. We have an answer to a Delver if we play Chamber Sentry. Um, we can even play it for two to maybe have an answer to Fairy Vandal. We have an Enduring Renewal. We don't have much else going on, but it's kind of what you sign up for when you put X mana XXs in your deck. So keep, and we'll start off with the Temple to Scry. Another land, we don't want that. So they play a Delver, we can play a Chamber Sentry to maybe kill it. Maybe we should have actually played a land and a Chamber Sentry just to be able to kill it right away. I guess we can play a Chamber Sentry for two now, that's kind of the same thing. Jurass. I think we wait on that. We just play Chamber Sentry as an answer to their Delver, and the next turn we can kill their Delver with the Chamber Sentry and play a Jurass. They brainstorm again just to flip their Delver, that's fine. So they get to flip their Delver, let's see what they reveal. They reveal Jurass, okay. Yeah, that's annoying. Hopefully they don't have the swamp to go with it. They do. So they take our Enduring Renewal. Yeah, they take the Renewal. So we get to dress them and we just hope to find another Enduring Renewal. They hit us down to 17. Tormod script. Okay. We draw a land. That's not what we wanted. Duress them. Take the him the Turok. Um, play a land and then just kill their Delver. But they do have more pressure coming with the Fairy Vandal. They're a little low on lands, that's good. And we are a little heavy on lands this game. So let's play the Chamber Sentry again. They will probably play the Fairy Vandal. And then if next turn they don't immediately cling to dust, we can use the Chamber Sentry to kill their Fairy Vandal. I don't know if they're gonna fell for that. Cling to dust, okay. They do see that and they cling to dust. So we can't kill their Fairy Vandal anymore. So we need to draw something that is not a land, but we draw a land. Yeah, I don't like where this is going. I guess we do attack. If they have another Fairy Vandal, so be it. Our opponent is taking a long time. They are down to five minutes. I don't imagine the clock's gonna come in to play this game, but 
I really hope not because I don't like winning that way, but I also hate it when my opponents take forever to make simple plays. Fairy Vandal attack, yeah. The good thing about drawing all lands is that they're duress miss. This is a good draw. So let's play the Ranger of Eos. That resolves. And then I think we actually just go for the endless ones and we just start playing big endless ones. And as long as they're not drawing too many cards, we can raise their Fairy Vandal. They're still stuck somewhat on lands, cling to dust just to draw cards. We have a more impressive clock now. Ponder, yep. So here you see the kind of beatdown plan, the Mopey beatdown plan. Range our VOs and you're flooded means that we get to cast a 7-7 seven, seven endless one next turn. And that should be pretty good. Another land, so we'll play a 7-7 seven, seven endless one. And then next turn we'll play the 8-8 eight, eight endless one, I guess. And go attacking. They go down to 11, so they're dead next turn to our creatures if they don't have anything. So they might have to keep the very vandal back to block. What can they draw? Cling to dust can gain them three life or draw them another card if they have another land. Doesn't seem great. I mean, the clock is becoming more and more relevant, I feel. Feed the swarm. Well, that's very good against endless one. Take no damage. Do they have a cantrip to make this fairy vandal a little bigger and scarier? They don't. So they decide not to attack. Enduring renewal here is kind of interesting. Because if they block our Ranger of Eos, we can, we can try and go off. I do think we play it here. Well, no, wait. They have the Tormod script and they have the Cling to Dusts. So maybe that's not a good idea. And I just want to play a big endless one. So let's attack with the Ranger of Eos. If they block, we can use the Chamber Sentry to finish it off. I kind of need to use all of my mana to do that. Because if they have a Brainstorm, that's pretty disastrous. Now they have no pr pressure left. We just play another big endless one. It's a 6-6, six, six, so it can brawl with a Tombstalker, and they can go. Yeah, Enduring Renewal is not that good if your opponent has multiple Cling to Dust and multiple Torment scripts. So I think it's a liability to play it, just because we can't draw any creatures anymore. They're down to two minutes. They have no way to kill us right now. So I do feel that they need to hurry up a little bit. Otherwise, they're just going to lose to the clock. Cling to dust their own duress, just drawing cards. So they have three cling to dust off their sideboard. But here you see what happens if your opponent just brings in a lot of hate cards for the graveyard. You can clock them with a big endless one. Ashes of Abhorrent, that's pretty good against their cling to dusts. So those are turned off, they can't flash them back. Stack them for six, see if they can find something next turn to deal with this endless one. Brainstorm, okay. They're down in one minute. Feed the swarm, okay. So gone is our pressure, but they don't have any pressure themselves and they're taking a very long time. So despite the fact that I don't really want to win that way, look, our clock is at 10 minutes. Our opponent has one minute left. You're just taking a bit too long, I feel. Okay, Fairy Vandal, sure. We're just gonna kill that with the Ores of Charm. Doesn't do anything else because otherwise they can just pop the crypt and gain a life. Another Ores of Charm, so I don't think we can lose this game just because we have the removal for their creatures. Another Ores of Charm, okay. Well, it looks like we're winning with the clock, as much as that kind of sucks, but Cruel Celebrant. Yeah, I will play it. I mean, technically we could play the Enduring Renewal and win that way, but it's kind of risky, so why do it? The Ashes of Abhorrent turning off their Cling to Dust was kind of nice here. So we win the match mostly just because they're out of time, but as much as, again, that sucks, it's also kind of their own fault. So let's go on to round two and hopefully we can get a natural conclusion to that game, win or lose. We're ready for round two. We are on the play and we open on this hand, which I think is a mulligan. We don't have black mana. We have two lands, one of which is a cycling land, but we don't want to cycle. So let's just mulligan this. Ooh, this hand is kind of decent, actually. I mean, we don't really do anything until, until, until turn three. But we do sort of have the combo rolled up because we can draw our whole deck and then find one of those combinations of non-creature spells that can get us an actual wink on. I do think we keep this. We bottom the fitted heath. We don't need too many filter lands and this can still get us double black. Uh, planes from our opponent as well. No play. Bastion of Remembrance. Okay, so now we only need to draw a land and then we can play Bastion turn three and during Renewal turn four and go off. So. Let's see. We just need to find that land. 
island. So I'm imagining this might be blue-white control. So we did find the land, that's good. If something gets mana leaked against the control deck, I think this Bastion in might be the better card to get mana leaked. Yeah, they mana leaked, that's fine. We might morph the Hera Specs. I kind of want them to just tap out for something. Not sure how likely that is. Sundial of the Infinite. Okay, that's some funky, funky stuff happening. Here, kind of want to play the Cruel Celebrant just because that lets us combo next turn, whereas the Grim Hera Spec doesn't. Let's see what they're up to. You don't put Sundial of Infinite in your deck to not be planning some sort of shenanigans. Hushwing Griff. It would be pretty good, except we care about creatures dying. So let's just play this Enduring Renewal and see if we can go off. Maybe they're like Eater of Days or something? Okay, so we shoot and win now. Play the Endless One for zero. It dies and we drain them. Let's just yield to these triggers because there's going to be a bunch of them. And we play it again. And I might just fast forward through this piece of the combo. All right, so after a few loops, our opponent does decide to scoop them up. Nice, that was what we want to do with this deck. The Hushwing Griff is sort of annoying. Or maybe it's not actually. Shuts off Ranger of Eos and Tight Hollow Scholar, but it doesn't shut off much else. So let's just board out a Ranger. Yeah, I have no idea what they're doing. I think we want some number of Vindicates just as a removal spell. The Kamis don't seem great. And then let's try to fit in a couple of Duress. Maybe cut an Ors of Charm and a Chamber Sentry. I don't know if Grim Harrowspex is that good. They do have like a random mana leak, but it might just be to kind of survive to their combo. So I don't know. Let's just try this. It might also be like Direction Dreadnought. That could be. That makes more sense. Let's see. We have a Duress. We have a Cruel Celebrant. We have Lance. We have a Ranger. This is pretty good. Let's see what we are up against. Okay, so we have the combo rolled up, so that's nice. Duress them, see what disruption we have to play through. Azorius Charm, Sundial of the Infinite, and they do have Eater of Days and Hushwing Grift and the Dreadnought. Okay, so that's what we're up against. I don't think we care about the Azorius Charm. I can draw them a card. Do we care about the Sundial? I also, like taking away the Sundial doesn't actually do that much because then they still have the Hushwing Griff. So yeah, maybe just denying them the card draw is better. They, they already have the Hushwing Griff, so they're going to get to do what they want to do. So yeah, they play the Sundial, and then next turn they have... I guess this is faster, though. Okay, Vindicate. I think we play the Tap Land. And then next turn they can make a Dreadnought, and we can just Vindicate it. Tormod Script, okay. Uh, Dreadnought, and then I guess they end the turn. Then they have Hushwing Griff, Eater of Days left. So I think, despite... This Tormod script being annoying, we're not guaranteed a combo next turn. So let's just kill their Dreadnought. Yeah, maybe it was kind of greedy to take the Azorius Charm. It didn't realize that they could do their combo a turn earlier. Okay, so they main phase the Harshwing Griff. So this Ranger is pretty bad now. Let's just play the Grim Hera Specs. They do need to draw two more lands. Oh no, they can just draw one land and then they have the Eater of Days. Okay. The Azorius Charm, draw a card. Uh, so they found the land. So next turn they're getting get to play the Eater of Days. They don't attack. Yeah, I guess we play the Cruel Celebrant. Um, I don't think we want to attack. And then next turn we can play the Enduring Renewal and the Endless One. It can get us with the Crypt, but maybe we draw into something. Okay, let's try first. If you find a zero creature on top, we can go off. We didn't. Playing the Enduring Renewal is kind of awkward. Because if we do, we don't get to draw a creature anymore. We can't draw any of our other stuff. So let's just play a ranger. Yeah, Hushwing Griff is kind of getting us here. They can put us on a one turn clock though. They can attack now for 11 and then we die next turn. Brainstorm, okay. Yeah, I think the, the gotcha plan of taking the Azorius Charm kind of backfired. Didn't realize that they could just play the Sundial and then wait a turn and have enough with two mana to do their thing. Ponder, okay. So are they going to shuffle? They chose to shuffle, okay. Another ponder, okay. Okay, so they attack for nine this turn. I'm going to leave the Hushwing Griff back. Yeah, that doesn't really do it. Let's play another Cruel Celebrant so we can at least live now. Because we can attack with everything, which I think we do. I'm guessing they don't want to block. Then we can play the Endless One to drain them for two. And we go up to 13. And we also draw a card. We can't mantle like this. So target them. So our combo has become less likely as a result, but I guess that's fine. Oh, they use the crit now. That's, there's no reason to do that. Ors of Charm, 
Okay, so what if we just kill the Eater of Days here? We take eight damage, we go down to five, and then they only have the Flyer. We do do that. If they counter it, that's fine too. Yeah, they mana like it. Maybe we should have waited. Well, I guess they counter whatever, and this, this is only good this turn, because next turn we'll have taken too much damage. Next turn we get to attack them for eight. I think we're still on the plan of drawing a zero mana creature. If they would have been attacking with this Hushwing Griff, we would have been in a worse spot. Mm, Bastion of Remembrance. I don't think that does it. I think we're just dead, but let's attack. See if our opponent decides to block for some reason. I don't imagine they will. They do, but do we draw a card if the Harrowspex dies? I guess we don't, and we only drain them for two. Let's only play the Tide Hollow Scholar just to see their hand, see if they board in anything else. Okay, Disenchant Mana Lake. So they have a lot of answers for our combo. Let's see, what do we want? Horse of Charm is kind of painful though. The Bastion's kind of slow. Maybe just put in an extra duress. This card is pretty bad against Mana Leak, but otherwise I guess it's fine. Don't really need this Falcon Wrath Noble, I don't think. It's kind of slow. Let's run this back. We have one land. We have the combo technically, but it's pretty greedy to keep this. It's a, it's a temple, so we get the scry, but we just have to draw lands for three straight turns. This isn't that much better, but I guess we keep it. Put back chamber sentry. Yeah, I, the thing is, I just don't like the mulligan. So even though this hand looks pretty bad because we can't really cast anything, I think mulling is worse. <laughs> Just because I don't want to go down to five. I think we need all the cards because we have some four minute card spells in the deck and we need our land drops. And we got there, sort of. Cruel Celebrant. And next turn we can play the Grim Harris specs and immediately draw two cards if we want. Yeah, they're representing Mana Lake. I don't really want to get my Harris specs Mana Leaked. They're thinking about it. Okay, so they tap out for a Sundial. So we get to resolve their Harris specs or we have a removal spell in case they play one of their big dudes. We can draw a card right away, but I don't think that's really necessary. Attack for one, and then I assume they're gonna try and play a Dreadnought. If they play a Dreadnought this turn, they can't keep up Manalik or any other interaction. So they honestly might wait, brainstorm, okay? So they don't do anything, which kind of makes me think that they have Manalik. Let's just play an Endless One for zero mana. Cruel Celebrant, draw a card, draw a land. Do I want one of my creatures to get Azorius Charmed? I don't think so. I kind of just want to play this Baron more and then say go. If they, yeah, well, I guess we're not putting any pressure on them. So let's just attack with the Harris Backs because even without the Harris Backs, we can still combo next turn. Okay, so they didn't have Azorius Charm. So we're mostly just playing around Mana Leak now. So if they go for a threat this turn, a Dreadnought, and they have open Mana Leak, we can try and kill it. So they go for the Dreadnought. Looks like they are not keeping up counter magic then. So I think we can just win. So we kill this. We take 12, but I think we just get to combo them now. I don't think there's any zero mana interaction. No, there isn't. So we win the match. Um, Kind of a funky deck from our opponent and they just couldn't exact their own game plan while keeping up interaction. So we're two and oh, onto round three. Maybe this deck's actually good, who knows? Okay, so we're back for our third round. Round three, we're on the draw. We have two lands, some interaction, a Grim Harris specs and some, some babies to draw cards with the Harris specs. So let's keep it. Our opponent plays a forest and a land of our elves. So I imagine we're against elves. At least I have a removal spell and this chamber sentry could actually be pretty decent. Okay, so we have our combo sort of rolled up. Let's just play a sentry for one and we can pick off an elf if we need to. If they play the, the Lord, I'm definitely killing it with the Ors of Charm. Yeah, we just have to kill that. Otherwise they're going to go way too fast. Destroy the Lord, we take two. And then I'm not gonna attack. I mean, if they offer a the trade when attacking themselves, I think I'm fine with that, but I just want to preserve my life total and get to this combo. They shouldn't have too many ways to interact with that. Another Lord, okay. So now they can just attack. Another Elf, all right. 
The good thing is we get to play a scholar and then hopefully take their one payoff. Elvish Visionary, not exactly a payoff, but still. Temple of Silence, we don't really need this. We just want a way to actually win when we play the Enduring Renewal, so we're looking for something that drains them when the creature dies. So now they have all the mana in the world, but they don't really have much to do with it. Play a Temple, and they put something on top, so we can expect them to do something pretty good next turn. I don't want to trade my Tide Hollow Scholar because the Elvish Visionary is more valuable. All right, I guess we play the Harris Packs, and then next turn we can play the Enduring Renewal and kind of go off. And then if our Disciple of the Vault isn't too deep into our deck, we can win. Otherwise we might deck ourselves, that's still a risk. But they kept on top, so let's see what they kept on top. Maybe lead the Stampede? Why anyway? Yeah, that seems like a good one to keep on top. So they get an Elvish Visionary and a Shaman of the Pack. So they can play both, and then we kind of have to go for it next turn, I think. Otherwise we might just be dead. Another Winding Way. Oh, they must have drawn that off the Visionary. Jungle Hollow, yeah, okay. So they can, but they can still play the Shaman. Okay, another Visionary. Opponent drew pretty nicely here, but they don't put a lot of pressure on us. This turn at least, we're not taking too much damage. Do they want to attack? I think I just block here with the Chamber Sentry. I don't think it's gonna get all that much better. We draw a card right away, which is kind of nice. Another Harris Pax. Nah, that's not what we need. Bastion of Remembrance. All right, if we play the Bastion, we are guaranteed a win next turn. If we just play the Enduring Renewal and go for it, then we can lose the game if our uh, Disciple is too deep into our deck. So let's just play the Bastion. We get another token, we make another blocker. Then we can play this sentry for mana. No, wait, we shouldn't do that. That is kind of dumb. Although, we can play it for one. And next turn, we can use it. We can play the Enduring Renewal and still use the mana we have left over to use the sentry, shoot something, it dies, and then we can return it. At least we have the blocker if we think we'll need it. But I don't think they can kill us unless they have double shaman, I guess. Double Shaman does it. They've drawn a lot of Elvish Visionaries. Dwine is elite, okay. So we know they still have a Shaman and an Imperious Perfect. So unless that lost card is also a Shaman, that's one Shaman. We go down to four. Do they really have another? Wow. All right, that is rough. Wow, our opponent's draw was amazing. Yeah, we should have gone for it, I guess. Wow, I was not expecting that. I mean, would we have survived if they could only attack? Yeah, we would have. We would have easily survived. Man, that's that's rough. All right, sideboarding. I guess we put in the children. This doesn't seem bad. Again, the Falcon Raft Noble is probably a little slow. Same for the Ranger. The Bastion as well. Maybe some Vindicates. Vindicates also kind of slow. Children is good against their drain plan, but otherwise it can just alpha swing. Maybe cut an endless one for another Vindicate. Yeah, I don't know. I think we also just want to enact our own game plan. So let's keep the endless one. We have the Enduring Renewal. We just need a draw or a drain card and we are good. Still kind of unfortunate to lose that game. They just had exactly what they needed. Elves of Deep Shadow. Okay. Here I can play the Chamber Sentry so I can mow down some elves, but kind of just want to get this scholar out there and maybe take the Lord. They have a bunch of Dwinans Elite and an Imperius Perfect. Let's just take the perfect and these Swine's Elites aren't as scary if we have, uh, if they don't have a Lord. Okay, so they drew a Land of War Elves and then they play a Dwine's Elite. All right. So we have the combo rolled up for next turn and I don't think the Elf deck is really that equipped to do anything about it. I'm not playing this Chamber Sentry because if they draw like a Tormod script, then having two of these babies is able to fight through that. Okay, so I think we should win now. Uh, they have two Dwinings Elite and a Shaman in hand, so neither of those cards can beat us. They probably play a bunch of Dwinings Elites this turn, and then we kill them next turn. Yeah, we don't block. Dwinings Elite, yep, and another Dwinings Elite. So they are exploding onto the battlefield, but we have our combo. Ooh, I was just scared there for a minute. 
I almost f6 through my turn. That would be bad because then we are very likely dead. So enduring renewal, play the endless one, and we just get to drain them out. See if they make us play it out or not. Our opponent said nice one and actually scooped them up. So thanks for that because clicking through this combo is always very annoying. Let's go to game three. We're on the draw now, so that is going to be a little tougher. So I think I don't really want to change all that much. No, just run it back. Yeah, this hand, only one land. We can't keep this, so let's mulligan. Our opponent kept. This hand is pretty decent, actually. We have a way to interact. We have something to lock them out with Enduring Renewal to some extent, because they can still just Shaman of the Packers. So let's keep. I think we bottom the Dimmer House card, as good as that is. It is very slow. Okay, so another Kami. It's not bad. Their start is not as, as, as fast because they didn't have a turn one elf. So maybe this Tide Hollow Scholar can get one of their lords again, which I don't expect it does a lot on the draw. Okay, they do have an elf. Ooh, they missed their land drop. So let's see if we can capitalize on this. Tide Hollow Scholar, Elvish Archdruid, Elvish Visionary, Silver Messenger, Wirewood, Hive Master. Hmm, I think we take the Elves of Deep Shadow, because they keep missing on lands. This is something that lets them, at some point, deploy more cards. And if they do hit a land, they probably play the Druid, the Arch Druid. We can Vindicate that, and, and we just have to deal with the rest of this. Other option is taking the Silver Messenger and trying to stop them that way, but let's take the Elves of Deep Shadow. Um, I actually think we are going to attack with this Kami. I don't think they can block, so... Let's get our damage. See what they have. Elvish Visionary. That was another card we could technically take, I guess. They still miss on land. We could Vindicate either their Elf or their Temple, but then if they draw out of it, we can't kill the Arch Druid. Yeah, I still think it's probably worth it, and then we just kill the Elf. So now the Arch Druid is going to take at least two turns to get down. They do get to play a Dwinus Elite, or they decide to trade. That's interesting. We have the extra one, so it's not that big a deal. But now if they play Dwayne is Elite, it can't actually make an extra elf. They're still stuck on land, so I mean, we'll take it. It's not the way we want to win, but we'll take it. Play another Kami. I imagine they will draw out of this, so we do need to get some better draws. Okay, well, they missed on land and they decided to scoop. Honestly, I think they still had outs. We had a very mediocre clock, and if they just draw some lands, they can just still build the board, but we'll take it. 3-0 uh, onto round four. Round four, uh, we draw this as our opening hand and we're on the play. It doesn't really do anything. We can't really disrupt them meaningfully. We have uh, a baby and we have the disciple of the vault, but those that really don't do anything for us. So let's mulligan this away. I mean, this hand is missing black, so there's a chance that we just get stuck. But I don't like mulling. We're already on the play, so we're down a card in that way. Let's just keep this bottom the ranger and... Play our planes, say go. Mountain, okay. Mock Fanatic, all right, all right. So this is either like Goblins, the Cavalcade deck, or maybe it's um, Aristocrats. So we don't draw our land yet. Another Mountain, okay. Take one. Another Mock Fanatic, okay. Yeah, I think we still want to wait with this Chamber Sentry. These Mock Fanatics aren't really pressuring us, so... We draw another planes, at least we can play Ranger of Eos. Attack, we take our two, sure. What do they have? Goblin Matron, so I guess they're goblins. Goblin Ringleader, okay. Swamp is good. What do we want? I guess we want to play, kind of want to play the Ranger, honestly. And then I think we get a Kami of the False Hope and we get an Endless One. So we can just play a big Endless One and try and brick wall them that way. Kami is actually not that great for his their mock fanatics. The ranger does block pretty well. Goblin ringleader, sure. Yeah. What do they hit? Mock war marshals, skirt prospector, and the ringleader we revealed previously. So not an amazing hit, but the skirt prospector does allow them to kind of go crazy. I guess we block here. Yeah. Keep our life total healthy. Deny them a bit of mana from the prospector. So we have our combo sort of rolled up. We play Bastion of Remembrance, and then we just play the Kami of False Hope, and say go. They can kill the Kami, 
least we gain a life. And as long as they don't kill us next turn, I think we're in good shape to win because it's hard for them to interact with the Bastion and they can't interact with the Endur Enduring Renewal. So I think we're in good shape. Goblin Chieftain. Yep. So they're gunning for the beatdowns. So we just block one of their guys, take our damage, and then we should win. I don't think there's anything they can do here. Our opponent is thinking. We have the loop. I'm just going to skip through the point till the point where either our opponent concedes or we drain them out. Well, our opponent conceded almost right away. So they, they understood how the combo works. Uh, and we go over to sideboarding for game two. So game two, what I want is the Vindicates are kind of nice to kill their Lords, but they're pretty slow. The Dust Dawns are only really good if they have two Lords, which is not unreasonable. I expect them, they look to be mono red. So maybe they bring in some ways to fight the graveyard. And then Jurass could be good, but if it's Tormod Script, they're just going to play it. So I guess we do want some Vindicates to be able to answer a Tormod Script. Again, I'm going to take out a Falcon Wrath Noble just because it's slow. I'm going to cut a Falcon Wrath Noble. It's kind of slow. We don't really have the time to tutor for it with the House Guard to set up our combo. So I guess we take that out. Then Kami of False Hope is okay, but it's kind of weak to Mock Fanatic. I guess it's still good enough, so we do keep it. It's something that I can see taking out. And then one more cut. Tide Hollow Scholar seems good. Cruel Settlement seems good. Order of Charm seems good. Take out an Endless One. Makes our combo a little less consistent, but I think that's fine. Okay, so we have no land, so this is an easy decision. This is a mulligan. We have one land. It doesn't produce colored mana, so we're going down to five. Not happy with that. Our opponent kept seven. This seems pretty good, actually. So we keep... We have the House Guard to tutor for the Enduring Renewal, which is slow, but it is a way to get it. And then we have Disciple of the Vault to go with the Chamber Sentry and combo off. Or we have a Harris Bex. And I think I like having the Harris Bex a little more. So I think we bottom the Disciple and the Endless One. This Harris Bex can catch us up on cards maybe. And the Disciple just dies the Mog Fanatic. So it's kind of a weak combo piece. Tormod Script. So they did bring in Tormod Script. Play the Baron more. Say go. This Chamber Sentry can do some pinging perhaps. So they don't have a turn to play. They attack us for one. We take it. And then, oh, they do Skirt Prospector. That's a good one. All right, Tide Hollow Scholar. That's also a good one. We can see what's up. We're hoping to hit like a, a ringleader or a matron or something like that. Oh, they have both. If we take the matron, then they have to sack one of their goblins to be able to play a ringleader. Otherwise, if we take the ringleader, they have to play the matron and go get a ringleader. So I think it's better to just take the matron. This gives us another turn to maybe draw a second tight hollow scholar. Or if they, they decide to go for it, they need to spend quite a bit of resources. So they find the land. Yeah, and they go for it. So at least we get the Mog Fanatic off the table. Let's hope this isn't like some insane ringleader hit. Well, kind of is. They get a Goblin Thrash monster, which can blow up the Tide Hollow Scholar and draw them a card. They have another Ringleader and a Mog War Marshal, so that's a pretty good hit, I would say. I don't want to block here. I'd rather have them use the Trash Master to kill this, and I want to have the Hero Specs in play when it dies so we can draw a card. Play this, cast the Hero Specs. I don't want to attack because I'm not planning on racing them. Yeah, we needed them to not hit quite as well on this uh, on this ringleader. So this game might be tough. We also don't have the second black to transmute the Dimmer House card. We can play it as a 2-3, not super appealing. I do not want to block, no thank you. Fault of the Archangel, that's actually an interesting one. I think what we do is just lay the house card. I mean, I don't want to wait to transmute this and maybe this Fault actually can do some work. This is why we put it in the deck for the more grindy games to just give us a little bit of play in those games if we draw it. This definitely looks to be a little bit more of a back and forth. Mog War Marshal, yeah. They still have a Ringleader left over that they can even easily cast this turn. Gert Prospector is a hell of a card. So is Ringleader, to be honest. Yeah, they sack that. And then they get to play another Ringleader. Let's see what this one gets them. Goblin Warchief, Goblin Warchief, Goblin Settler. Oof. So this Vault of the Archangel is probably not a very good plan anymore. Uh, goblin Ringleader. What do we do here? I think we can double block, but that doesn't seem great. I think we just block with one creature. 
Yeah, I don't really know how we get out of this, especially not with the Tormod script also on the board. If we block here, this dies. We take three down to 11. I think we just block with both. Let it happen. Draw two cards and hope that that gets us anywhere. We get a swamp and a step. Even an enduring renewal doesn't do it because they have the crypt. So I don't know what we can draw. That's not it. So let's cycle. Cruel Celebrant. Yeah, I mean, we play the Celebrant, play our swamp, and then let's just see what happens. I imagine we are just dead. War Chief, yeah. War Chief. Yeah, we're we're pretty dead. There's There's no way, I guess. They attack with everything. So this is 10 damage. We're not dead to this. They need to attack with more. I mean, if this is the thing that they're attacking with, I think I just let it happen and see if they can burn me out somehow. I'm not sure why they're not attacking with more. Goblin Settler, sure, okay. Still don't think we really have any outs, but another Settler and a Tempo of Silence. We are dead. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I guess I do want the Endless Ones, maybe, as just a bigger creature. Try and do it that way. The Disciple of the Vault plan seems... I don't know, maybe the, the Kamis I actually don't like. It's just not going to work with the with the way that they can mock Fnatic, they can search for the mock Fnatic. It's just unlikely to be really good. Uh, just put in an extra Vindicate, put in the Endless One, and let's just go for this. Do we want to cut the Ranger? No. Maybe this Dust Dawn is actually not that terrible. If they do go off, this is our way to kind of get back in the game. And then we do cut our Ranger. I like the Rangers. Let's just cut this. In that game, we saw that it was kind of slow. So let's go for this. Honestly, I still don't know exactly how to sideboard with this deck. Yeah, we would like to play first. This hand is kind of perfect. We have everything we need except for lands. We need more lands. Um, we hope they don't have Mog Fanatic. That can't be helped. Let's just play the Disciple because we're going to be constrained on mana, I think. So better to just have this out there. Tormod script, okay. We have an answer for their Tormod script. Do I want to play an Endless One as a 2-2? Or do I want to play the Chamber Sentry to be able to shoot down some goblins? I think I want to have the Chamber Sentry ready to go if I if I next turn draw and Vindicate the Tormod script. And then the turn after I can play the Enduring Renewal and go off. And I guess I also want to keep the Ors of Charm up. So let's just let this happen. Uh, we should have attacked, obviously, but... It's only one point of damage, luckily. What do I have? Another Tormod script. Okay. Our Vindicate, not as good anymore. We draw another Vindicate, but we can't cast it. So I guess we just go on the beatdowns. And now I do want to play this endless one as a 2-2. Two -two. That, that doesn't really trade with anything. I'd rather kill maybe a War Marshal if they play it. Okay, so they're stuck on lands. If we draw a land, I might go just on the Ponza route. We didn't. We did draw a good one. This Bastion could be pretty good here, but it also means that I want to keep the Endless One in hand because if we blow up a Crypt, and then we need multiple ways to go off with the Enduring Renewal. They missed on land again. Ooh, Chamber Sentry. I guess we play one now. So we can shoot down some Goblins and we attack. So this is kind of a Cripple fight now. See if they can find the land. Mm, well, yeah, they play the land, so they found it. What did they have? Goblin War Chief. We are definitely killing their Goblin War Chief. That is for sure. I think I want to Ors of Charm it, just so we have our Chamber Sentry to beat down with. Yeah, if we had played the Endless One when we could, maybe that would have been better. That's hindsight, but we would have more pressure on the board. Okay, not a Goblin Settler. Not a Goblin Settler. Goblin Settler. Uh, we didn't want to see that. Yeah, they blow up our swamp, so now we have a colorless land. It's not very good. And we draw Enduring Renewal. That is awkward. So we just use this to kill their Goblin Settler. And we get in for one. And I guess we discard this Ranger, because that's unlikely to be good. Yeah, they just have loads of gas in the tank. I wouldn't be surprised to get Goblin Settler again. Although, they're not immediately tapping their mana. And if they had a Goblin Settler, I'm sure they would. Goblin War Chief. Can't kill that anymore. That's unfortunate. Oof. Grim Harris Specs. That's not what we wanted to draw. So our opponent gets to go kind of nuts next turn. I guess I just play this Endless One for one. Otherwise, we just have to discard. Maybe discarding Enduring Renewal is actually not that bad. That's probably better. If I can draw lands for the rest of the game, I'm fine. Siege Gang Commander. Yeah, that's kind of scary. Another Tormod script. Okay, well... The combo is becoming less and less likely. Okay, yeah. I mean, 
We missed on land again. There's, we can try and play it out, but I'm pretty sure they can figure out a way to kill us. So we're just going to scoop this up. Unfortunate, but I guess this deck only plays 23 lands and is looking to resolve some four drops. So that's the risk. Um, yeah, let's go on to the final game, see if we can get another 4-1. We're back for our fifth and final match of this league. We are on the draw. We have some babies. We have a tight hollow color for disruption. I do not like to mulligan. I am keeping this hand. It's not great. It's missing a lot of combo pieces, but we have some things we can do. I don't want to mulligan. So Lundy Visions, some sort of Storm or Delver. Let's just play the Kami and we say go. Island. Okay, they're not doing anything. Let's just play this tight hollow color, see what's up. Mana Lake, that's what's up. So we don't get to see their hand. Uh, in with the Kami. Field Mist Border Post. Okay, so this is like the Wildfire deck. Interesting. Play a Swamp. Let's play our Cruel Celebrant and swing with the Kami. Now we just need to draw Enduring Renewal and we are good to go. As long as we can get to resolve it, obviously, but our opponent plays Kefnet. So if we draw the Enduring Renewal, we're good. Ranger of Eos, that's not a bad one. So let's play the Ranger. Let's find the Disciple and the Chamber Sentry. I mean, we have enough Endless Ones already that I don't think we need more of those. Let's attack. Mountain. Yeah, so this looks like the, some sort of Wildfire deck. I mean, Wildfire would be pretty backbreaking. I think that is probably pretty good against us. Fact or Fiction. We don't want them to wildfire us. They seem to be stuck on lands. So let's put a border post and then give them factor fiction, field based and Thrix. I really don't want to get wildfired. So we want to try and get a 5-5 five, five endless one. That's for sure. They took the factor fiction pile. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we draw another cruel celebrant. So let's just play that cruel celebrant, play another and try to keep pressuring them so that if they do wildfire, they would die. Actually, we can drain them for nine right now. No, we can we can drain them out. We can just play the endless one, play another endless one. They lose six life. Then we play another chamber sentry. They lose another six life. And we sack the Kami and they're dead. Yeah. So we just naturally aristocrats killed them. Nice. I didn't realize we were that close to just killing them. And sacrifice the Kami and they're dead. All right. Game two. We definitely want the Jurassic. I think we want the Grim Harrispex as well. The Dusk Dawn doesn't seem that great. It can kill one of their big guys, but the backside is unlikely to matter because if they killed all of our creatures, a lot of the times it will be with a wildfire and then I think we might just lose. I don't want these Kamis because they're not really relevant for this matchup. The Disciple of the Vault still good because of the Ranger. Take out the Falcon Raft Noble. Mm. What else? Ooh, Ors of Charms. We can cut two of these. And then maybe just keep in the Falcon Wrath. Yeah, I can see that. Let's let's try this. Ors of Charm, I still want to keep some of because it helps you combo in some scenarios, but Yeah. Let's try this. Okay, so this hand is not terrible. It's not great either, but the Bastion is pretty good. It's harder for them to interact with outside of counter spells. Um, so let's keep this. We have a Scry land. Really hoping to draw, I guess Tide Hollow Scholar is a nice one. Mistvine Border Post. Temple of Silence. I like the Harris Pex as well. We do need lands, but yeah, let's just keep it on top actually. We have a lot of things we can play. Mountain. So I guess they're repping Counterspell now. I don't want to just do nothing. Let's run out to Cruel Celebrant. Guess they counter this after their last game that they died to triple Cruel Celebrants. That gets countered. That's fine. Another Border Post. Yep. And then we just run out the Bastion. I hope it doesn't get countered. Oh, they have another Border Post. Okay. We play the Bastion. And yeah, we have the Dimmer House card, but unfortunately we cannot actually transmute because we don't have double black. Let's see. Fact or fiction? Ooh. So they steal our Bastion, but they don't get to untap only one land. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good for them. Let's play this 
Grim Harrisbex, I guess, because we do want to try and resolve that. I'm really scared of a wildfire, but so far they seem to be a little stuck on mana. They didn't play a land last turn. And they do have another border post. So next turn? No, if they have a land next turn, they can wildfire us. And they have another border post, so wildfire is live next turn. I wouldn't mind drawing a Jurass or a Tide Hollow Scholar. Falcon Wrath Noble. It's not a Jurass, not a Tide Hollow Scholar, but I guess we do just play it. And if we get wildfired, at least we draw some cards. We draw one card, so that's not even that great. So fingers crossed, they're not just slamming it. I mean, if they haven't, they have to slam it, right? Okay, so maybe they want to play the tricks first. So let's transmute, go get our Enduring Renewal. We can't cast it and we can't win with it either at the moment. And then we just attack them. If they flash in the, the big guy, we can try and of Charm it. Then at least if they wildfire, they don't have an amazing amount of pressure on us. I guess that was why they waited last turn because they kind of wanted to have their bigger dude in play to actually do capitalize on that wildfire. There's the Thrix. Uh, we don't want to let them block, so we're just going to kill this now. We take some damage, but that's hardly relevant. Uh, we take some extra damage because of the Bastion that they stole from us, but we also gain that back from the Falcon Wrath Noble. So they're down the nine. Maybe they just have to wildfire in order to survive. Pyroclasm. Ooh, that's that's good too. We do drain them and we draw a card. So we drain them for three and we draw a card. We draw a land. Is it Signet? Okay. Another Fetid Heath. That's not what we wanted to draw. Play the Disciple. We can't play the Enduring Renewal just because then we're kind of stuck. We can't draw any more creatures. We're just going to kill our Disciple. So Lundy Visions. Mana Leak. That's fine. We have enough mana for that. Not until they wildfire us, of course. Draw an island. Maybe they're a little bit on empty. Or is this the wildfire? Kind of looks like it. Destructive force. Okay, that's a little worse. But they only have a mana leak left over. So I guess we sacrifice Fetid Heath, Plains, 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 and another Fetid Heath just because we have the other one and we don't have to bother too much with annoying filters. We draw another Enduring Renewal, that's not what we wanted. Now their mana leak is pretty effective. So I guess it's not terrible to draw the extra Renewal just because it allows us to get one mana leak. Ooh, Chandra, that's a good top deck. They ping us, Plains. We can take the gamble and play this Enduring Renewal, hoping that our opponent decides the mana leak hit. But if they're smart, they won't, and then we're stuck. So let's not try to just get them. They ping us again. No, they reveal the top card. Okay, so there's nothing they can steal. Chamber Sentry. Kind of want to keep that in hand. It's just going to die otherwise. Actually, it's not just going to die. They can't easily kill it with the Chandra. So let's just play it as some way to put some pressure on them. Yeah, where do you mana leak it? No, decide to let it resolve. Okay, Thrix. Oh, they're getting a clock on us. Kefnet's last word. Now they can kill our, steal our guy. I've seen enough. Okay, so we need to be a little faster or have more relevant disruption. We didn't see any like Tormod scripts, so I don't need Vindicates, even though it would have been nice to blow up some of their Planeswalkers, but by that time we've kind of lost the game already. Dust Dawn, still don't really like it all that much. Maybe we can take out a Chamber Sentry, but that, what do we put in? No, let's just run it back. This hand is pretty good. We have a way to find our Enduring Renewal. We have a Tide Hollow Scholar to look at their hand. Yeah, let's keep this. They also kept seven. Island. No border posts. It's a nice one also. Tight Hollow Scholar. Let's see what they're working with. Pyroclasm, Mana Leak, Burning of Zinyi. Is it Signet? I mean, whatever we take, they're gonna get. Maybe just take the Pyroclasm. And then next turn, we can take a turn off. Next turn, if they play the Is it Signet, we resolve the Grim Harrisbex. If they do not, then we, then we just transmute. So let's take the Pyroclasm. I am scared of this burning. Do they play the Signet? It makes more sense for them to wait, honestly. Because next turn they can do both. Tied for the, to go for the Signet. Okay. So then we get to resolve this Harrispex. And we slam in for two with the Tide Hollow Scholar. They play an Island. Did they draw another Pyroclasm? No, they drew another Is it Signet. So next turn they get to Burning. 
Dimmer Signet, yeah, they definitely get the burning. I think we also want to cycle this Chamber Sentry just to get another look at like a Duress or something. Yeah, I think so. Draw a card, Dimmer House Guard. They're going to get to get us pretty good with the burning. They're going to get all of our lands and they get to keep a land even. So let's just play the Ranger of Eos. They probably mail like this. Yep. Yeah, this seems rough. Don't know how we get out of this. Next turn they blow up all of everything we have and then we don't even have lands left. Let's attack them. Not sure why they decided to play that land. Because now they just have to sacrifice that. They burning. They lose all their lands, we lose all our lands. So they have man like left and a bunch of signets. But the signets don't do anything. So I think that was a mistake on their part. They could have still played the burning without having to play the land. We draw another Grim Harris Pax, not where we want it. Okay, we drew a land, good. So who draws out of this fastest? Temple of Silence, okay, we're drawing lands, that's good. We want an Enduring Renewal, but we want lands more than that. They still didn't find the land. Okay, that's a good draw. I mean, if we draw more lands, it's a good draw. These Dimmer House cards are pretty bad. Okay, they found their land as well now. So we have a real game on our hands. They're just gonna Pyroclasm. Yeah, they are going to Pyroclasm. We drain them for one and then board a post. So let's duress them. Entrancing Melody and a Pyroclasm. I think the Melody is much worse for us. So we know what we need to beat. The island again and another board a post, it seems. Treasure Cruise. Ooh. Okay, so we found the land. I guess we just play the. Bastion, because if we play the hero specs, they're just going to pyroclasm it away. And this way we can actually get some drain value from it. But I imagine we might be in a tough spot here. I'm going to attack if they want to flash in Thrix, at least they can resolve this hero specs. We know they can pyroclasm it away, but that's just how it is. Go down to 11, Temple of Silence, another Duress. I don't think we want that. We, we need action ourselves. I'm going to play this. They might have a counter, but we can't play around those at the moment. They do. No, we can't pay. And then we can transmute the house card for another Ranger of Eos. I'm just really scared that they play another Burning. Looks like that might be it. Destructive Force. Yeah, let's just play on for a bit, but I imagine this, this is just game over. Tide Hollow Scholar, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna scoop them up. There's not that many lands in the deck. They're much better set up to win this game than we are, so. Unfortunate, 3 2, that's what it is. So that was Black White Enduring Renewal combo, or Black White Babies. We started out really nicely, 3 0, and then fell down to 3 2. Felt like we were in most of the games. It was pretty competitive in that regard. The deck does feel a little bit slow and clunky sometimes. Some of these synergies that I've built in to be able to go off from various positions might just be a little bit too cute and slow the deck down on normal draws. I feel the fair game plan could also be bolstered a little bit. We had a couple of games where we were successful with just playing a normal uh, aristocrats game plan but in a lot of others that felt lacking so I would want to make that a little bit stronger. One of the downsides to this deck is that it kind of folds the graveyard hate at least the combo portion and graveyard hate is pretty present just because of dredge. One other option would be to, to look at going and dipping into green just because that offers you a little bit of card selection maybe some ram to do your combo a little bit faster but the mana base does become more weaker, especially since I would want to try and run uh, some Gavany Townships. That line is just amazing for a fair creature beatdown plan. Another thing you probably want to work on is the sideboard. Like the Vindicates were kind of clunky, Children of Corlys was barely relevant. So there is something here. The plan is pretty powerful. It just needs some tuning. So try it out. I hope to see you at the top of the leaderboard on the Penny Dreadful site. And also, of course, for my new video. Let me know what you thought of this one in the comments below. Thank you for now and on to next time.